Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be talking about Quattro versus Quattro. The all-wheel drive systems on these two vehicles are very different. While the S4 uses a standard all-wheel drive system found in most Audi models, the TT uses a Haldex system, which is a very different system. So let's go over some real world examples of how these all-wheel drive systems are different. Check out this clip to see how the S4 uses the Torsen center differential to send the power to all four wheels on this vehicle. Let's compare that with how the TT uses the Haldex system mounted on the rear diff of this fraud wheel drive system. You can see the S4 wheels are spinning all four together and the TT wheels are alternating front, rear, front, rear. Before we talk about details about why these two vehicles operate very differently in these circumstances, let's give you a little bit of history about the two all-wheel drive systems found in these models. The traditional Audi all-wheel drive system started in 1981 with the Generation 1 Quattro. The vehicles this was mounted in were the Audi 80, 100, 4000, and 5000 models. Those vehicles featured an open front differential and electronically lockable via a switch in the center console, center and rear differential. Starting in 1988, Audi models started getting the Gen 2 Quattro systems. This system introduced the Torsen center differential that Audi is famous for. The Torsen differential allows the vehicle to split power to the front or rear wheels depending on need, which is mechanically determined by the technology within that differential. Like Gen 1, this system used an open front diff and a rear diff that was electronically lockable via a switch in the center console. Gen 2 Quattro defaulted at a 50-50 split with the ability to send up to 80% of the power to the front or the rear wheels. This would have been found in vehicles like the Audi 100, 200, or S4. Quattro 3 had a very limited run and was found in the 1990 Audi V8 model. This vehicle used different systems depending on automatic or manual vehicles. So the automatic vehicles use an electronic center differential with a torsion rear differential and an open front differential, and the manual vehicles use an open front differential and a torsion center and rear differential. Generation 4 of Quattro also uses a torsion center differential. This uses a front and rear differential, which creates issues because open differentials tend to send the power to the wheel with the least resistance. This can create an issue where if you lose traction on a wheel, that all the power goes to the wheel with no traction, meaning your car won't go anywhere. They combat this by adding EDL to the vehicle, also known as electronic differential lock, which uses the ABS system to engage the brakes on the free spinning wheel and make sure you hold that wheel sending the power to the wheel that has traction. Generation 4 has a 50-50 split with the ability to send 80% of the power to the front or rear of the vehicle. This system came out in 1994 but was much more widespread on later models, starting with the B5 S4 in 1997, ranging up to around 2007. Quattro 5 uses a updated torsion center differential and open front and rear differentials with some models like this S4 we have here having an optional torque vectoring rear differential. Much like the Gen 4 system, this has EDL or electronic differential lock, which uses the ABS system to hold the brakes on the wheel that has the least traction, sending the power away from it. Now this vehicle has a power split of 40-60 as a default and has the ability to send up to 70% to the front or 85% to the rear. The vehicles that would have included Gen 5 would have been vehicles starting around 2005 becoming much more widely spread and prevalent in the B8, Audi, A4, S4, and current model vehicles. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of the Haldex fake wheel drive system found in the TT. But before we do that, we wanna show you a brief example of the center differential so you could understand how the fraud wheel drive system on the TT is different. All Taurus and Quattro systems have longitudinally mounted engines with longitudinally mounted transmissions. This trans will be extra long due to the torsion center differential being a part of the rear end of your transmission. Due to this design, the engine and trans is shifted further forward as the front differential and axles must mount to the transmission. Haldex vehicles use transversely mounted engines and transmissions. Since the center differential isn't required, the system will have a drive shaft that runs to the rear of the vehicle with an open differential at the front and rear. The key to the Haldex system is found on the rear diff. Mounted to the rear differential is the Haldex system. This essentially acts as a clutch to engage and disengage the rear wheels of the vehicle on demand. The first generation of Haldex was found in the Mark 1 TT 
found right behind me here. This system used the differential speed between the front and rear axle to operate the system. A pump effect is generated using the outer clutch plate, along with working and lift piston operating in parallel, which creates oil pressure in this system. While this vehicle does have an electric pump, the electric pump is not the primary source for oil pressure for the Halbex clutch. Now the power split between front and rear on this car is going to be 90% to the front, 10% to the rear, with the ability for a 50-50 split. The vehicle can't exceed 50% to the rear of the vehicle as it is bound by engineering to have a 50-50 max. Now this vehicle does essentially function as a front wheel drive car and is only reactive as a system, which means it can only engage the rear wheels when it senses slipping of your tires. Generation 2 of the Haldex fictitious wheel drive system operates very much like the first generation. There were some changes made to the oil control system, adding electronics valves to simplify the system. This system does have a split of 95 to the front, 5 to the rear, again with the 50-50 split as the possibility. Much like the Gen 1 system, the Gen 2 system has reactive engagement, which means it will not engage the rear wheels of the vehicle until it sees slipping. The vehicles that you would find the Gen 2 system in would be the 8PA3, the Mark II Audi TT, and Mark II Audi TTS. The Gen 2 systems also have upgradable performance control modules that you could do to improve the engagement and performance of your overall all-wheel drive system. Now the Generation 3 Haldex was not a system that entered the VW and Audi world. Haldex was a system developed by what was the company named Haldex and is a technology that they offered to multiple product lines. There were other vehicle manufacturers that used that Generation 3 Haldex system, but Volkswagen and Audi was not one of them. The Gen 4 Haldex system, while notably different in many ways, used the same basic layout as the previous generations of Haldex. The main changes you see in this system are a further simplified hydraulic system, and most notably, the change to an electronic pump being the primary source of fluid pressure for that Haldex clutch. The Gen 4 forgery wheel drive system is the first Haldex system to be proactive. Now this means that this system is going to do more than just react when you have wheel slippage. The split of power on this is going to be 100% to the front, 0% to the rear, with the ability to match up to 50-50 as a distribution. Now again, this vehicle is going to be front wheel drive as a standard, but because it is a proactive system, you're going to have more than just a on or off, it's going to engage, disengage, depending on the need of the vehicle and what it sees you doing. So if you were to be, let's say, sitting there revving your vehicle, it's gonna know that you are about to launch and that it's going to engage that system ahead of time in a proactive fashion. The Gen 4 Haldex system is commonly found in the 08.5 and, and later 8PA3 Mark II TT as well as the TTS. This is also a system that you should expect to have the ability to upgrade by adding a performance module to your Haldex system. Last, we have the Gen 5 Haldex system. Now this full wheel drive system is the most current one found in Audi models. This system is going to use a distribution of 100 to the front, zero to the rear, much like the Gen 4 system, again with a 50-50 split. It also uses a proactive system, much like the Gen 4. With the exception being that the Gen 4 system does have upgradable modules at this time available, the Gen 5 does not have any upgrades available at this time, which I suspect to see some in the future coming. And that completes the fifth generation and final Haldex system. I know I've been goofing on the Haldex system and how it's a fraud and it's fake and forgery and phony, but uh, it's actually not a bad all-wheel drive system. It's uh, all in good fun. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of both the Quattro system and the Haldex system. First, let's talk about pros of the Haldex system. So the reason that Haldex was likely developed in the first place was for fuel economy. So the best of both worlds in this system is going to be because you get all-wheel drive as well as front-wheel drive, meaning you don't have the drivetrain loss that you're going to get from constantly having a dragging on a torsion system or full-time all-wheel drive system. You're going to have a vehicle that is constantly engaging all four wheels, which means you have additional drivetrain loss and drag on your engine. This is going to result in higher fuel consumption, which means cars that run Haldex will, go, will consume less fuel and have better fuel economy. Number two, weight. 
So weight has multiple pieces of it that make it better overall. First, the components in the system are going to be lighter overall than a torsion system, just due to the components being larger. A torsion system is going to have a very long transmission with your center differential at the back of it. That's going to be much larger than what you'd expect in a normal transaxle car, as well as the fact that the weight distribution being further forward in a torsion car because the front axle and, and differential have to be further forward in the engine bay. It actually produces further weight over the front of the vehicle, which for overall handling actually is not as good. So the further weight back is a positive as well as the components themselves are weight saving. And our third pro is gonna be tunability. So tunability is more in the fact that you can make up for some of the shortcomings of the Haldex system by tuning them. And they do have some options as far as tunability that they generally have multiple settings that they would have more of a street and performance mode, maybe even two or three modes that allow you to engage at different levels, which means you can still have the best of both worlds, especially if you're capable of switching between the, the distribution of your Haldex system. Haldex cons. So the first Haldex con is the obvious one. It is not full-time all-wheel drive. That system is not going to be the best for overall performance and you have that system and it doesn't engage full-time. Number two, service interval. While the Torsten system is a lifetime fluid, Haldex systems require servicing. The service intervals range from about 20 to 40,000 miles, which means you're going to have some additional costs for vehicles that have Haldex systems in them. Number three, Limited ability to transfer power to the rear wheels. So with the Haldex system, it has a max of a 50-50 split where the Torsten systems have the ability to transfer some of them up to 85% of the power to the rear wheels, which means you're going to engage those rear wheels much further if you were to have traction issues or and or performance needs that require further power to be transferred to the rear of the vehicle, which is why for performance, you want to make sure you can engage as much as possible for either difference, front or rear, which is a, a, another small shortcoming in the Haldex system. Now let's talk about the pros of the Quattro Torsen system in RS4. Number one, it's going to be full-time all-wheel drive. That's the obvious one that everybody came here for and is the reason why most people are going to say that the Torsen style is going to be a much better system. Uh, this system, again, much like we just talked about with the Haldex system, having a torsion differential setup allows you to transfer further power to the front or the rear of the vehicle, depending on demand and need. So this gives it a superior advantage, giving the ability to transfer a larger portion of its power to the axles that are required, which is why this does have an overall performance advantage. Number two, the possibility for a sport diff. So the sport diff is something that is in our S4, but isn't found in every car, but it does allow the possibility when you have a torsion center differential to add a torque vectoring rear differential. So essentially what torque vectoring is, and we will do a separate video on this, is it allows the rear differential to send the power left or right as much as possible uh, or within a certain range possible to allow maximum performance. This engages often during turning and things like that. So this is a huge performance benefit and we will have some further details about that in the future. Number three, service interval. So Torsen vehicles do not have service intervals where Haldex vehicles do. This is going to be a cost difference. I know a lot of people who own Audi cars tend to service their stuff anyway, so you may not actually see that as an actual cost, but as far as a requirement, there is going to be a cost difference in those services. Now let's talk about cons of our Quattro torsion system found in our S4. And number one is gonna be weight. Weight is going to be not only the components that we discussed previously, but again, the distribution of that weight due to the fact that the engine and transmission are pushed further forward. Now the B8 does have some variation where they change some technology to try to adjust the flywheel to allow everything to be shortened and more compact. The B8 and B8 and a half later models did have that and so this is not as far forward. Uh, previous generations did have all of those components further forward which creates obviously some handling concerns when you hang too much weight out over the nose of the vehicle. Number two, fuel mileage. So if you have a vehicle that you're using as a commuter car, fuel mileage is going to be affected by having full-time all-wheel drive. This may or may not be a factor in anybody's decision between choosing between these components or may not be a factor at all, but it is something that would be a con in the column for the torsion setup. 
And lastly, our last con for our Quattro system with a torsion diff is going to be entry level cost. So vehicles with torsion diffs uh, on average, just because they tend to be different vehicles are going to be more expensive. So you are going to have a harder time getting into them depending on the vehicle. If you compare cars like the TTRS and things like that, those vehicles obviously are going to be on the higher end of what you expect uh, for vehicles that have Haldex. So entry level cost may be variable depending on what you're discussing, but overall it's generally more expensive to get into most cars that have full-time Quattro uh, in, with a torsion type setup. So now that we understand the details of how these systems work and the differences between the operation, we now can look back at our video and our slow-mo of a side-by-side -side and talk about why these things are different. So as we watch these vehicles operate as they're spinning, the top shows the S4 and the both wheels are spinning together. It does appear that the rear wheels are biased in this circumstance, which you can see as they will be rotating quicker as this car is accelerating. With the TT, you can see that because of the way Haldex systems work, it's engaging those rear and then front wheels and then rear and then front wheels and then rear and then front wheels over and over again as you see that engage. So that's why you see one turn and the other turn then one turn and the other turn over and over again alternating back and forth is because that's as the Haldex clutch is engaging back and forth as this vehicle is starting to launch. As far as which one of these systems is better, it's going to be subjective and there are certainly pros and cons to both of them. If you were to be someone who just wants to drive a car that has all wheel drive every day as a daily so that when you need all wheel drive, you have it, Haldex is a great option. If you were to be looking to track your car and maybe do other things and are common to need all wheel drive, a Torsten setup might be a better option for you. But with that said, there are tons of cars now that have amazing performance that have Haldex and I certainly would not shy away from any cars like an S3, a TTS, an RS3, or a TTRS. Just because they have Haldex, they are amazing vehicles that anybody should be happy to own and or drive. In fact, the new Audi R8s use Haldex as their front differential because they are mid-engine vehicles. The front differential is engaged using a Haldex system just like these other vehicles. Same fluid, same operation, slightly different setup, uh, but that vehicle would be something that I would consider to be a high performance vehicle and they're using Haldex there. Thank you so much for watching our video on Quattro versus Quattro. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.